So what I have here set up on the screen is a 16-row truth table. What I've done is I've arranged the atomic propositions, the basic propositions P, Q, R, and S alphabetically. And then I've assigned the truth values so that I capture every possible scenario. So, you know, they could either all be true, they could either all be false, as in this last row, or all these variations in between. There's a pattern you can follow, and you can look, if you look at the columns, you can see the pattern. I'm basically in the fur furthest rightmost column. I'm alternating trues and false, then you alternate double true, double false, then you alternate four trues, four falses, four trues, four falses, then the leftmost column, eight trues, four falses. And if you follow that pattern, then you can imagine how the pattern continues. For example, if you had 32 rows, which hopefully uh, I won't give you guys, uh, you can see uh, the pattern for creating a truth table. So now what we're going to do here is I've got essentially um, the, the premises of the argument. There's the first premise, P and Q, the second premise, R and S, and then the conclusion here, which is P and S. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to figure the truth values of, of each of these premises. So what I'm, the relevant columns here, when looking at the truth values for the compound statement P and Q, I'm going to look at the P and the Q. So when they're both true, that means that the outcome is true and it's false otherwise. So if you notice on the second row here, they're both true again, so true both true again, true, both true again, here, true. If I find at least one false, then I know that the conjunction P and Q is going to be false. So here I have a true and a false, and that means the result is false. And you can see what's going to happen, because at least, if you look down comparing these columns P and Q, I've got at least one false all the way down. I know that all the rest of my columns are going to be false here. Here I'm looking uh, to evaluate R and S. I'm looking at the columns R and S. So here we've got a true. Here we've got a false because a true and a false is false. Uh, false, false. Here's a true again. True and true for R is the only circumstance in which a conjunction is true. Uh, false, false, false. There's another true. False, false, false. Another true. False, false, false. And then finally, I'm going to uh, fill in the uh, uh, evaluation for P and S. So here the relevant columns are the P and the S. So those are the two that I'm looking at and evaluating this. So that's going to be true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and then all the rest of these are going to be false because, as you see, the P is false in all of them. So so the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to say, ask ourselves, here are the two premises, right? Premise 1, premise 2, and the conclusion. Is there any row on which all of the premises are true and yet the conclusion is false? Well, the first thing to do is look for any row on which all of the premises are true. And here we, here's one, but in that case, the conclusion is also true. This isn't a case where both the premises are true, because this one's false. So I'm looking down here for a case, another case where all the premises are true. And there's only one case, the very first row. And so in the one case where both the premises are true, the conclusion is also true there. right? So this means that the argument is a valid argument. It's formally valid because there's no instance, there's no row, right, on which both the premises are true and yet the conclusion is false. Had we found such a row, then that would make the argument formally invalid. But since there isn't any row where both the premises are true and yet the conclusion is false, that means the argument is formally valid.